Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. You led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ, and claim your daughters and sons no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The joy and peace of God be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. The prayer of the day is a prayer for the second Sunday in Easter. Please join me as we pray. 
Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I believe all of the announcements for today can be found inside your bulletin, so if you please make note of that. Um, and also, the um, announcements about the, um, our partnership with Kircher's Flowers um, can be found on the end of the pews. Make sure you pick up one of the yellow slips as you are planning your spring planting. Any announcements I may have missed? If not, let us hear the word of God. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Be Psalm 133 will be read responsively. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. That God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. congregation may be seated. We are going to sing our hymn of the day as we are going to marry the children's sermon and the sermon together. So we will continue with Now the Green Blade Rises. I know it may sound strange on the Sunday after Easter, Easter 2, where the crowds are normally a little bit smaller, but this to me is one of the most intimidating gospel texts to preach. Part of it is, if any of you are friends with Kristen Hunsinger on Facebook or social media, you may have seen her picture yesterday of the big slab of marble that sits behind the pulpit at the seminary that I graduated from that says, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So there's a little bit of that, that old style idea of what it was to feel those goosebumps those first few days in seminary as you realize that you were being called to go into the world to preach the gospel. And then there comes part of the ordination track into the midst of this gospel lesson. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. But if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It's called the office of the keys and it is part of our theology and is bestowed upon the pastor at the time of ordination. The idea of proclaiming forgiveness of sins is one of great joy. The idea that you can retain 
sins is a little bit overwhelming a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit terrifying. And I've wrestled with this for the last 25 years. What does it mean to be the one in the, uh, in the midst of the congregation that holds the office of the keys? So as I wrestled with that, as I played with that, I ran across one of my old professors when I was doing doctoral stuff, Mary Shorehinkle, who wrote a commentary on this and said, there's actually an alternate reading. It's not the reading that got voted in to the way John's gospel was going to read. But in one of the manuscripts, early manuscripts of John, there's an alternate reading that the word for retain is also the word for embrace. So, hear this reading. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you embrace the sinner, they are embraced. Think about that for a minute and how we live out our daily lives. We hear all through scripture about going beyond the outer wall into the place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. We hear in our lessons today about Jesus being light and there is no darkness. We don't see Jesus condemn Thomas for his doubt, but to embrace him and say, here I am. What if in this life of the church, our call is to embrace the sinner? What if our call in the life of this church, what if where we are sent to go is into a place to embrace sinners? I don't know about you, but many times when I've talked to folks and said, you need to come to church some Sunday. Oh, pastor, that place would fall in if I walked in the doors. I've been doing ministry for 25 years. I've ministered through earthquakes and we've had robberies in churches. We've had all sorts of stuff. Never once have I seen a piece of the church building fall when a sinner walks in the door. Because I got to be honest, if we go back and we look at our second lesson today, for we've all, we all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Who here walked through the doors this morning without sin? I know I didn't. I imagine you didn't either. And yet, the roof still stands. The chandeliers are still lit. The windows have not broken out. And Jesus is still present in word and in sacrament. You see, for so long in the church, we've been quick to point the finger at people who sin, as long as they sin differently than us. We're quick to cast out those who don't think the way we do, who don't feel the way we do, who don't worship the way we do. Wars have been fought. Wars have been fought over when do you baptize children or adults. Great separations in churches have happened over what really goes on at communion. Let's be honest. Do we really know what goes on at communion? I spent years studying it. All I can confess is what Luther confessed. This is my body, this is my blood, and I'm not God, so I don't pretend to understand how it happens. Just God's promise says, this is my body, this is my blood, poured out and broken for the forgiveness of sin. How does water, defiance water, nothing special about water, But as we baptize babies, as we mark them with the cross of Christ with a little bit of olive oil, how does that change their lives? Because it's just simple stuff. Spoken in the midst of a broken congregation by a human pastor. But we trust the promise of God that it is God's word and not simple water. It is God's word, not simple bread and wine. It is God's word and God's promise, not just a little bit of oil. It is God's action in, around, and through. So what about you and I? What if where we are being sent, what if where the Father is sending us, is into the place in the world to embrace those who are broken and sinful? What if we are here to call people together to proclaim forgiveness, 
But when we go forth from this place, we embrace the sinner and invite them to come with us. Luther once said, the only difference between a believer and a non-believer is a believer is a simple beggar who knows where to find the bread. When I was on intern, or when I was in seminary, and I was doing my clinical pastoral education under the Bull Street Bridge in Columbia, South Carolina, there were all sorts of signs. It's where the homeless community gathered in Columbia. And we went through this summer that I was working with the homeless. We went through this, this big influx of folks from all over the Southeast. And so one day as we were doing an intake with the, at the homeless shelter, I asked one of the guys I had been working with, I'm like, John, where's everybody coming from? He goes, oh, Dave. He goes, we have our own communication network. And everybody all over the southeast now knows to come to this place because there's housing and there's hope, there's food and there's care. And I thought, man, what if the church would do that? What would lives in our congregation look like if we went to those places where there are the broken, where there are the sinful, where those who think they are unforgivable and unforgiven? What if we went to a place like that and heard the alternative reading of the gospel? If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. When you embrace the sinner, they are embraced. How would our life in the church look different if we went into the world to embrace the broken? What would it be like if we went into the world to embrace the sinful? What would it be like if we went into the world to the embrace those who don't feel very embraceable? For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins. There's a vast world that knows it's sinful. There's a vast world that knows it's broken. There's a vast community that is hurting and scared and afraid the way many of us are. There are friends and family members who suffer and struggle with the same stress and strife and shame as we do. Bills and jobs, health and family, relationship and stress. But yet, they don't know where to find the bread. They don't know where to come and find the one who says, peace be with you. They don't know where to come and find the one who says, your sins are are forgiven. They don't know where to come and find the, the place where they find that unity and acceptance and love. Just as the Father sent me, so I send you to set the captive free, to heal the sick, to feed the hungry, to embrace the sinner. When did we see you hungry, O Lord? When did we see you sick or in prison, O Lord? When did we see you needy, O Lord? When you have done this to the least of me these, my brothers and sisters, you have done so unto me. As a father sent Jesus, so we are sent. As Jesus told his disciples to forgive sin and embrace sinners. As Jesus told his disciples to go into the world preaching and teaching and baptizing. Y'all, look around the room. Seriously, take a look around the room. Right now. I don't see a Peter. I don't see a Paul. I don't see a John or a James or a Mark or a Stephen. I don't see a group of 12. Try as I might, I walk out these doors on Pentecost Sunday and I preach a sermon, 3,000 people are not suddenly going to believe and join the congregation. The days of us waiting for the apostles to do their magic is past. You, me, we are those disciples. 
You, me, we are those apostles. You, me, and we are those sent. You, me, and we are those called to embrace the broken. Brothers and sisters, let's be the church. Let's be the church of Jesus Christ. Let's be the body of Christ in this world, in our homes, in our places of work, in our neighborhoods, in our communities. Let us be Christ to our neighbor. A simple beggar showing another where to find the bread. Thanks be to God. Would you stand as we join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please greet one another with a sign of Christ's love and peace.
invite you to rise as you're able in body or in spirit. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. <clears throat> Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Come with your forgiveness, grace, and peace, Almighty God, to the people of this congregation. Give us a hunger for your word, a thirst for your goodness, a vision for your love for each of us, and a desire to serve you by serving others in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Give, we pray, to the leaders of the nations and to all people entrusted to their care, the peace which the world cannot give. Send your Holy Spirit into the world so that repentant faith and deeds of mercy may bring the light of your saving love to hearts darkened by the powers of sin, evil, and death. Lord, in your mercy. Defend with your Holy Spirit all who stand in harm's way. Give them wisdom, courage, and strength to accomplish their tasks honorably and well. By their labors, bring blessings of peace and order in war-torn places and bring them home safely. Lord, in your mercy. Bring the peace of your forgiveness, the healing of your touch, and the joy of your salvation to all whose lives are shadowed by suffering to body, mind, or spirit. Especially we remember before you this day those listed in our bulletin and those written on our hearts. Cheer their hearts, renew their faith, and restore them to the fellowship with all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you have been raised from the tomb and you promise your resurrection to all you have redeemed. We therefore entrust into your strong arms the lives of all who have fallen asleep in you. Wipe away our tears of those who grieve, turn our doubt into confidence, and grant that all of us may at last see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, almighty God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We gather remembering that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, telling them, take and drink. This is, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, telling them, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Would you join me as we pray together the prayer our Lord first taught? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. This is the body and blood of Christ poured out and broken for the children of God. May we taste and know that the Lord is good.
Invite the congregation to stand as you are able in body or in spirit. May the body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. Pray with me. Life giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.